Asparagus is one of the first crops that we harvest in the springtime. By planting crowns, we get a jump start of two or three years versus these young plants or seeds. There's nothing that compares to homegrown asparagus. It's sweet, full of flavor and nutrients. Planting out crowns needs to be planted correctly in order for them to get a strong start so that you have many years of harvest. And I'll show you how this is done. Asparagus is a long-lived perennial, usually lasting 15 to 20 years. It grows best in zones three through eight. Asparagus prefers moist, mild summers with cold winters causing it to go to sleep for several months during the winter time. Our summers are quite hot here, so I'll give you some tips on how to grow asparagus in hot climates. Asparagus came from the seaside, so naturally it can tolerate higher saline soils. Plus, it tolerates that higher pH soils that most vegetables don't like. If your soil is acidic, you may want to add some lime or some wood ash. This will help raise that pH, and it'll also add some potassium, which all vegetables love. When picking a site for your asparagus, remember it's gonna be living there for a long time and it needs its own space. No competition from other plants and especially perennial weeds. Asparagus love sunny locations, but if you live in a hot climate like I do where summers reach to be about 115 degrees, then that asparagus is definitely gonna benefit from some afternoon shade. For heavy clay soils, you'll wanna add plenty of organic matter like some good compost. You want that soil to drain well because asparagus crowns can rot in that soil if it doesn't drain well and they stay too wet. You may need to add some sand or even some perlite to your soil for better drainage. Most raised beds have had the addition of really good soil that drains well. But if your beds have been put on concrete or a weed mat, then they need to be deep enough to accommodate those deep, long asparagus roots. Asparagus roots are quite extensive. They can reach three foot or even more when they're well established. This helps them during the winter months when it's really cold and during those hot summer months, keeping those roots cool. I get a lot of questions of when asparagus can be harvested and for how long of a period of time it can be harvested. Asparagus needs to be established. And then in the spring, when those first spears start to appear, those need to be the ones that get harvested. The older the plants are, the longer they can be harvested. And I'll give you some guidelines to follow. You can plant asparagus from seeds, young plants, or crowns. Plants are usually found in the springtime or even the fall time. Crowns are usually found in late winter or springtime. Crowns should be planted out a few weeks before your last average frost. But honestly, when I order crowns online, they usually come after my frost date and I plant them out and they do great. In fact, they grow just a little bit faster because of those warmer temperatures. When planting from a crown, it's really helpful if you know how old those crowns are. These are two year crowns, so I know when I can start harvesting my asparagus. These young plants that were started this winter from seeds are gonna require some extra time, about two years longer than a crown will take. But they're a lot easier to plant and crowns will require just a little extra time to plant them correctly. These crowns are two years, meaning they've been growing for two years. That gives me a two year jump start over this plant of when I'll be able to start harvesting. I'll be planting these two year old crowns in my soil this year. They'll live in my soil for two years. That makes them a four year old plant. At that point, I can start to harvest them lightly for about one week, two if they're really vigorous. I don't want to harvest them too much because then that'll zap the strength out of their roots. The third year these crowns have been in my soil makes them a five-year-old plant. At that point, I can start to harvest them for three weeks, maybe four if they're vigorous, and so on. Younger asparagus tend to send up thinner, pencil-sized asparagus, and more established older asparagus will send up thicker, more succulent and tender asparagus spears. I leave these thinner pencil sized spears to develop into these ferny leaves. That helps them to photosynthesize and create bigger root systems. However, as you start to harvest your established plants, these spears are gonna get smaller and smaller. And this is a good indication of when you should stop harvesting your asparagus spears. When you get your crowns, whether it's from mail order or from a local nursery, a lot of times they look quite dry, and this is pretty normal. What you don't want is a crown that looks like it's been soaking in water. If you don't have time to plant your crowns out right away when you receive them, then you can put them in a box with some wood chips or even some soil conditioner like I have here. This just helps them from drying out further, but it's best to get them in the ground as soon as possible. 
but life isn't perfect. If your crowns are already starting to grow, then you want to be extra careful. This little guy here has got a spear already growing and a little nub on this one. If I were to knock these nubs off, that zaps the energy out of the root system. Just like if we were to harvest too soon, the roots don't grow as good, so we want to be extra careful. Before I plant my crowns out, I like to dunk them in some water that I've added a little bit of liquid kelp to. This helps hydrate them and the kelp nourishes them and reduces plant stress. Asparagus should be planted 12 to 18 inches apart. This allows enough room for that extensive root system to grow. I'll be planting mine in my raised beds and I'll be staggering them like a dice of five. This allows me to get more asparagus in a smaller amount of space. Amend and loosen your soil deeply with good compost or well-rotted composted manure. We never want to use raw manure because that's going to rot our asparagus crowns. I'll be planting more asparagus crowns in my raised beds as well as a raised bed that's not being used right now out back. I'm trying to up my production of my asparagus. Both spots that I'm planting asparagus will have afternoon shade and this is really essential to keep that soil cool, which keeps those crown cools when you live in hot areas. Make a trench or even a hole that's eight to 10 inches deep with a convex or a mound in the center of that trench with really nice loose soil. Asparagus will benefit greatly with an addition of fertilizer. Just an all-purpose, well-balanced fertilizer sprinkled over the mound that you made and then covered with some more compost over the top of that. Asparagus isn't one of the biggest feeder, but it loves some food to begin with to get it off to a really good start. Place those asparagus crowns right over that mound with those roots spread out and facing downward. Fill in the trench or that hole with that good loose soil, covering that crown about two inches. Once those spears start to emerge out of that loose soil, then cover it with another two inches of soil. This helps develop that deep root system right from the start. This deep root system will help them during the winter time as well as the hot summer months. The first few times that I planted asparagus crowns, I was in a hurry and I didn't want to follow all that nonsense. So I just dug a hole and plopped them in the ground. Needless to say, the time that I put into it didn't pay off. Taking the time to do it right the first time doesn't require a second time and you don't lose a year. After planting, keep that soil moist until those roots are well established. For hot climates that receive little or no rain during the growing season, you may want to water two or three times a week, even when those plants are established. It's said that strawberries make good companions for asparagus, but what I've seen, strawberries that are planted with asparagus, those strawberries can choke out that asparagus. And strawberries don't produce very well because that asparagus shades those strawberries. And digging out strawberries to thin them can actually damage those asparagus roots. However, strawberries can actually benefit by being planted near asparagus, by getting that afternoon shade. Just don't let those strawberries creep into that asparagus. Asparagus should have its own space. Planting strawberries near asparagus is just fine. Just don't interplant. Asparagus loves to be heavily mulched. Not only does this keep the moisture in, but it helps keep the weeds out, which competes with moisture and nutrients. I'll mulch mine with compost a few times a year, two inches thick. When it's time to harvest your asparagus spears, you'll want to cut them off at ground level or even snap them off and chill them right away because this will keep them tender and sweet. For fall and winter care of asparagus, go check out this video here for more information. If you want to have plenty of asparagus to eat and to preserve for your family, you'll want to plant at least 20 to 25 plants per person. Asparagus freezes nicely, but it's really good freeze-dried. All you need to do is blanch it for about 30 seconds, drain it, put it in its trays, sprinkle some sea salt over the top of it, and freeze-dry it. It makes a pretty darn good dry snack. When you buy asparagus in the grocery store, usually it's a week old or even older, and time is very unkind to this vegetable. It starts to lose its nutrients, sweetness, and flavor as soon as it's cut. In fact, asparagus that's just been freshly cut has four times the amount of natural sugars than asparagus that's even one day old. Now, can you imagine if you love asparagus, how much more you'll love this vegetable that's just been freshly cut? 
It's definitely worth finding a spot in your garden or your yard for some long-lived asparagus. God bless you, and we'll see you next time, whales. <laughs> Higher pHs, the benefit of potassium. Yay! Okay, asparagus. <laughs> Very good. Okay. That's what we want. You don't want any competition. <laughs> yes. And then what? Uh, yeah, I know, but... <laughs> okay. Two years sooner. Bronze? For... <laughs> mm. I leap and it just... This just, and it just, mulched. Ah, it sounds weird. And and weeds out. As well as moisture. Water. Water. H2O. <laughs> this keeps them. Bingo. Not quite. I was doing this. Huh? You next time. Yeah.